Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com Good Biblical Morning! Yeah! Welcome back to Bible Read Along. Sorry I wasn't in the video countdown time. I was getting everything set up and I need to blow my nose. So give me one second. I ran out of time quicker than I was expecting. A um, little more setup time this morning. I was at Celebrate Recovery last night in Red Deer, Alberta. I was teaching on conflict, conflict resolution and boundaries. And we had a great night, but I had to take all my computers set up. And so it took me more time to get everything back set up and where I want it today. But we're here. We are live right now on Facebook. Hello, friends. We're live on TikTok. Thank you for joining us. No matter which platform you're watching on live, Facebook or TikTok, TikTok, please type in the comments. Let me know you're here. Say hello. Say where you are from. Um and and let me know and uh also if you're watching this later on facebook youtube or listening on our podcast or video podcast type in the comments replay and where you are from because we would love to get to hear you and i know some of you may be confused is this the real daniel there's no blue shirt today but yes i am the real daniel and uh i'm rocking my home church it's our 50th year celebration that's our founding pastor on the back it says if you think this is great press like and it has him flying around with balloons i think um because he's always our lead our founding pastor is always on social media posting i was just preaching in india if you think this is great press like i was just in hawaii if you think this is great press like um so he's all over the world and traveling and preaching and such a great inspiration um, of a gentleman, you know, he's, he's older and just won't stop. Can't stop. I think he's 80 and he still has a 40 year plan. He's like, well, God better keep me around. Cause I still have another 40 year plan to share the gospel with as many as we can. So that's my founding pastor at home church in Red Deer, Alberta. So welcome. I'm going to go to our Facebook comments. Let me get it here. There we go. Good morning. So good to see you. Uh, Michaela is here. Good morning, Josh Weeb. Welcome, sir. I'm so glad you're here, my brother. Jill, Matthew, Josh, I need to message you later. So be watching. I got a message coming your way. Um, Matthew from Kelowna, BC. Janet in Saskatchewan. The frozen tundra of Saskatchewan. Us too. Uh, last night, as we were leaving Celebrate Recovery, it hit minus 40 degrees, and that is wicked cold. If you've never experienced that kind of cold, you don't even know what I'm talking about. You can't relate. It's not like, oh, it's minus 10, oh, it's minus 20, it's minus 30. Minus 40, minus 50 is a different level of cold that if you have never experienced, it it literally will take your breath away. Um morning so gina welcome from montana they got some snow too i hope you made it home safely gina welcome valentina in california welcome allison west chester ohio so glad you're here um matthew's asking morning christopher you're you're on both platforms you're bouncing back and forth um uh matthew's asking if we could do the book of job probably at some point it probably won't be our next book though but right now we are doing the book of John. And so if you are excited about that, invite a friend, share this out. We got some friends joining us on TikTok as well. Christopher's there. Morning, Vicky. She says she cannot relate to minus 40. Never felt that cold. The coldest I've ever worked in is minus 55. And it was something I've never experienced. That was up northern Alberta. And uh, it was it was ex crazy. Um, Gina says she's experienced minus 62 in Alaska. Yeah. Those kind of temperatures, these temperatures are real, by the way, like people actually live and function in these temperatures. 
Um, but welcome, welcome, Caitlin Frost. Glad you're here. Fort Myers, Florida, in the house. Tony's here. Welcome, uh, Jarrett. Welcome. So glad to have you guys. We are just so glad to see you. So again, if you're scrolling by, say hello. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. We want to know who you are. We want to actually build community. Morning, Sharon. Um, welcome, OD. I do welcome questions. Um, however, I probably won't answer them until the end. So you're welcome to stick around. If it's a quick one, I might answer it right away. But feel free to ask if it is you trying to reel me into an argument. Um, it will wait until after we are done our Bible study. But if you're new here, scrolling by, say hi. Hi couple reasons we do that. Number one, we want to know where you're from. We want to connect. We want to build family. There's, If you're watching on Facebook, there's actually a group chat if you'd like to be a part of. I would highly recommend you turn the notifications off though so that it doesn't drive you crazy. Um, but we have a group chat that is available anytime where you can share prayer requests and testimonies and talk about what we're reading or talk about your life. And so if you want to be a part of that and get to know some more people, that's a great way. Um, so, um, yeah, welcome, Aggie, Dennis. So glad you guys are here. And the other reason we want you to comment, say hello, is not just so that we can get to know you and connect. It's actually because the more you comment, the more you push the hearts on TikTok, the heart and the thumb up on Facebook at the bottom of the screen, tap it. Um, the more you do that, the more you comment, the more you like and tap hearts. And the more that you share this out, the more people that get to hear it. And today we're talking about some good news. We are talking about some good news. So if you are ready, we got people joining still in the Philippines and Arizona and all over. Um, yep, casual day. So I'm actually, <laughs> people, people know when I'm not doing work stuff, but I'm actually, I got physio first thing after Bible read along. And then I am coming back home to, we are, our, our company is very good at continual learning. And so I actually have some college courses today, all via zoom and, and an online portal. And so I am actually going to come back home and do my college courses and then go, I'll get put on my work clothes and go to work this afternoon. So that is it. Not a day off, but a day of learning. And I want it to be comfy. My office in these temperatures, it's minus 40. My office is literally inside a sea can, a shipping container. And so it is insulated. There is heat, but it's still not the same. You get very cold. The floor is cold. And I'm like, I am not doing online learning um, for five or six hours, you know, in the freezing cold. So I'm going to come home. But let's pray and then let's dive into God's word today. So, Father, thank you so much for good news Lord, today as we read, would you open our hearts, open our minds to your greatest news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, open us up, change us, transform us, make us into Bible-based, Christ-centered, and Spirit-filled believers that are led by you, that want to do everything for you, that want to reach others for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen and amen. And if you are ready for the word of God today, we're going to type in the chat, good news. Type in the chats, good news, TikTok, Facebook. If you're watching this later on YouTube, type in the chat, good news. And let's get ready for God's word. And OD, I did see your question there. Red Pints two times. Um, if Jesus is God's son and God is all knowing, does that mean that God told Jesus what the one piece is? I don't know what you're talking about with the one piece. I don't understand that part. Um, so good news. Type it in. I'm seeing it all over. We got some good news. Some people who love the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Bible. John chapter 20. If you've already typed in good news, if you're on TikTok, hit the screen just a few times, get some hearts. If you're on Facebook at the very bottom, that thumbs up or that heart, give it a tap as well. A few times. 
Like, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Awesome. Now, NIV version, John chapter 20. We left off yesterday with Jesus being crucified. And we went through some of the crucifixion. We went through some of the spiritual and the physical side. That's often how John has written his gospel. Almost every chapter has a physical thing and then it has a spiritual thing and so we see this this contrast we saw it even on the cross while jesus is on the cross father forgive them they know not what they do i thirst the the spiritual side and the, the natural side we saw that blood and water came out of him and to me this speaks of the second birth that we are born of water we have a natural birth but we are also born again or reborn or saved by the blood of jesus christ this is the only thing that can save us it is free it cost him everything but it is free to us it is the free gift of god's grace received by faith so john chapter 20 the empty tomb that's some good news already early on the first day of the week while it was still dark i love we'll get into this but i love this because this is just such a picture of you know sometimes our life is still facing issues heartaches problems while it is still dark while there is still a storm going on there's a resurrection taking place. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved. This is John talking about John. <laughs> so she came, she came. Could you imagine if one of your kids, like this is the same as one of your kids, if they're telling stories about you as their parents and they go, one of the children, the one that my parents love the most, me. Um, you know, it just, it's kind of funny every time I see that, the, the disciple that Jesus loved, the one that he loved the most, Jesus's favorite. Um, so he came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Now, interesting here. Um, because in John's gospel, again, we have to remember it is the last gospel written. He already knows the gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He knows them. He's probably even read them. At the very least, he has had conversations with each of those authors about what they have written. Um, so, you know, this is, it's interesting. And John takes kind of a different perspective here, but it's still good. So we don't know what happened. The stone's been rolled away. Now, he didn't really talk about the stone in his gospel. So we have to go to the other gospels to know what's, what this is talked about. Joseph of Arimathea had a brand new tomb, a cave, where they would have put a whole family or more in this when they died. So there would have been set spots for people and they brought Jesus in and this was brand new no one else in there now they also rolled a a huge stone in front of the entrance of this cave um by the roman soldiers they were told to do this sealed with the stamp of herod at the time the king so that they could not if you opened this tomb you were sentenced to death that's how this works so all of a sudden the tomb is empty the stones move. These are big, big things. This is big ordeals. Um, I, I missed something there, Christopher. Sorry. These are, but these are big issues. So let's keep going here. Mary comes running, says they've taken Jesus. We don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter. So this is again talking, who's the other disciple? The one Jesus loved, John talking about himself. Peter and the other disciple, Peter and John, Peter and I were racing to the tomb and both were running. But the other disciple, me, made it to the tomb first. And he bent over and looked in at the stripes of linen laying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and he just runs right into the cave, right into the tomb. And uh, 
he goes in. So we see kind of the contrast here of Peter and John too. It's kind of interesting. Peter reached out. He, Peter, sorry, he outran Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent over. He looks in. He sees linen, the cloth they would have wrapped him in, laying there. He didn't go in. Simon Peter came along behind him and straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen laying there. Verse 7. We're in John 20, verse 7. Um, okay, so J John, Christopher was saying John was the disciple that Jesus loved or our Bible wouldn't say so. I agree. I think Jesus did love John and John was one of the closest disciples. Um, and I even believe this is inspired by God to be written as is. I think in the inspiration of God's writing, though, there is times and we have to know the context of a little bit of humanity gets in there at times. For example, Paul wrote and would say sometimes, this is not the Lord speaking now, but me and my own wisdom. It's better that you don't get married. It's better. And he'd give his advice. Was that inspired by God? Yes. Um, is it protected by God? For sure. It is the absolutely preserved word of God. Um, and I think John slips in a little bit of his humanity here as well. The disciples and the one that Jesus loved, me. Um, we ran there and guess who got there first? John did. Um, I think there's a little bit of, you see it in scripture, a little bit of that hint of his own humanity while he's being inspired by God what to write. A little bit of his own humanity does get in there, um, in my opinion. And now that that get that opens Christopher a bigger topic of you know the inerrancy of God's word. Um, some things that we've addressed on our TikTok and in shorts that you may have seen on Bible Read Along. But uh, let me know, Rachel. I see you just messaged and said you are very sick and to pray for you. So let's stop. Let's pray. That's what we do. Father, right now we lift up Rachel, my dear friend, Rachel. Father, you are the healer. And even as today, as we read about your good news, you, the good news is that you are God almighty. You heal, you restore. And so Lord, I pray right now over Rachel, over her, her kids, over her husband, over their home, the healing of Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that you touch her body. We command sickness. Go in the name of Jesus. We ask for healing and restoration even now in the mighty name of Jesus. Give her strength and peace and rest in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's keep reading here. Um, so finally, verse eight, finally, the other disciple, John, who had reached the tomb first, John went inside. He saw and believed. He saw and believed. He saw and believed. This is so important. Um, they still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. He had to. There was no other option. There was no other choice. Everything Jesus did and who he was and what he said falls apart if there is no resurrection. Everything falls apart. And this is why as Christians, we actually, you know, the number one thing, Lee Strobel, Case for Christ. Um, if you don't know his story, great books, great movie, check it out. Um, but Lee Strobel, you know, an atheist reporter who went to go prove disprove christianity and he said where do we go well if we're gonna go to something here we're gonna go to the the resurrection because the whole point of christianity everything about christianity um deals with the resurrection if there is no resurrection there is no christianity and so if that part falls apart everything falls apart but here's the Good news for today. 
there is a resurrection. The good news is that he isn't dead. He is alive and risen and forever will be alive and seated at the right hand of the Father, King of kings, Lord of lords, name above all names. The good news is that everything that holds Christianity together, the resurrection is true and accurate and has been proven time and time and time and time and time again. And so... Verse 9, they didn't understand from Scripture, Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. And Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Now, Mary stood outside the tomb crying. Why are they crying? Because they, all they know is that he still has passed away. They have that he's passed away and they don't understand what's going on. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. So we're already seeing a picture. We keep seeing this phrase bent over. So this cave, when you're picturing this, it goes down into the ground, right? So they have to bend down to look inside of it. It's not like walking into a large cave in a mountain. It's a small catacomb. It's a tomb. And so you'd bend down, you could look in there. And so she bent down to look into the tomb verse 12 and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus body had been one at the head and the other at the feet hallelujah verse 13 they asked her woman why are you crying they have taken my lord away she said and I don't know where they have put him at this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not realize that it was Jesus. What a powerful, this is so, so, so powerful. John looks in the tomb. He finally comes in. He sees the cloth laying there. He doesn't talk about Peter, but he comes in and he, he, he says he saw that the tomb is empty and the, 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 the linen is laying there and he believed. Now Mary Magdalene, she sees angels angels in the bible they're there they're real angels in the bible do they appear all the time and no but they do appear throughout scripture and the point of angels is always to point us back to jesus so i'm not going to get weird here because i was raised charismatic i would even say hyper charismatic and so in that sometimes there was people that that would you know oh angels appear all the time and this is normal and it's it's not i just want to tell you right now biblically that is not normal are there angels yes do we entertain them even without knowing it yes this is biblical do they appear in some type of angel form that we look and we go wow and then usually the first thing they say is fear not um Yes, we see this in the Bible. Do we see it happening all the time? No, this is a miracle. Now, is it there? Should we acknowledge it? Yes, we can't just say it didn't exist. That's the other extreme. Oh, no, 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 that never even happened. There's no angels. They don't, other extreme. Um, the other extreme is they happen all the time. And But somewhere in the middle lies the truth that there really is a spiritual realm. There really is angelic beings. They really do interact with humanity. And, um, and, but this is not the normal. So we have to be aware of that. Now let's keep going here. Uh, she sees Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was a gardener now why is he she thinking he's a gardener either he's appearing in you know the form he's appearing in his his resurrected form here is a little different than what she expects um or she's she's confused she's crying she doesn't understand the tomb's empty there's suddenly angels she turns around there's someone standing there she probably has not had a really good look She's just assuming I'm in the garden, I'm at the tomb. This is probably a caretaker of the yard. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him. I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary, I love this. Mary. She turned around. She turned toward him. 
This is why I think she wasn't fully seeing who he was. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbanai, which means teacher. As soon as he said her name, she knew who it was. I pray that when Jesus calls our name, which I believe he does, I believe still today by the Holy Spirit, that when we are led to a point of salvation and belief, he calls our name. He says, Daniel, it's time. He says, Matthew, it's time. He says, Tony, it's time. And he draws us in. And my prayer is that when he calls our name, Vicky, Rachel, those of you here, when he calls our name, that we turn towards him and that we respond with belief of who he is, that we see and know who Jesus is. Verse 17, Jesus said, do not hold on to me. She, she's trying to grab him. Don't hold on to me for I have not yet ascended to the father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my father and to your father to my God and to your God. Why is it her God now and her father now? Because she believes he is resurrected. That's it. Now she saw him, so she had to believe. And in that moment of belief, salvation is what comes. So Peter saved, John saved, Mary Magdalene saved. Now, were they saved before? Yes, they could have been because they actually had revelation of who he was like Pilate. They had revelation of who he was, what he had done, that he is son of God. He's God in flesh, come to earth to surrender himself as in an act of, of love through the crucifixion. Now, did they know for sure he was going to rise? Maybe some did. They Some of it says, you know, even the disciples, they didn't know until after what this all meant. But he's risen and they believe and now life is changed. This is the same for us today. How do I get saved? How can I know this Jesus? Well, do you believe who he is? That he is God in flesh, came to earth, paid a price that we could never pay. Yes. Do you believe he died and rose again, taking our sin upon himself because he was a perfect man, lived a perfect life, and now died a sinner's death, but he rose again? Yes. Then good news, you are saved. If you believe these things, salvation has come to you today. And I would encourage you. Now there are next steps, but that's salvation. That's it. You are saved. What are some of those next steps? I would suggest that there's an actual declaration out loud saying, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is not only Lord, he's my Lord. In other words, if we were to put this in today's English, I believe Jesus who he is. I believe what he did. And I place him in charge of my life. You're in charge now, Jesus. Because I'm not in charge. Even when I think I'm in charge, nothing nothing is in my control. Nothing is better. Nothing gets taken care of. Um, you know, I'm placing you, Jesus, risen Lord, in my life. Now, what are some further steps? So that's a declaration. We declare it. We believe. We receive. We declare it. And now I would suggest um, there's a few things. But number one, connect to a church. Connect to other believers. Get a Bible. And I would encourage you to pursue and look into baptism, water baptism, as a sign of obedience of your faith that you say, I have made a decision. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. So when we make that decision, we declare it to the others. We let them know, I have decided to follow Jesus Christ. And baptism is an outward sign. We talk about it lots in Acts. You can go check out those videos. But baptism is an outward sign of an inward change that has already taken place. You are already saved because of your belief. You have received God's grace 
by faith. Just believe. That's it. Just believe who he is and what he's done. That's what we're putting our faith in. The crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the crux of humanity, the the center of Christianity. This is what we put our faith in. Jesus said, don't hold me. I haven't ascended. Go tell the others that my God, your God, my father, your father, that's where I'm going. Um, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the good news. I have seen the Lord, she told them. And he said these things to her. Jesus appears to his disciples. We're good. I'm going to rip through this last part because we are out of time. Uh, Should I wait? No, we're okay. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, Sunday, this is why we celebrate church on Sunday now. Well, Sunday's not the Sabbath. No, it's not. It's resurrection day. It's good news day. That's the whole point. And at the and we talk about this more in Acts as well. The disciples, the apostles, the early fathers of the church, the founders, they followed Jesus and they actually would celebrate both. They would celebrate the Sabbath and the Sunday resurrection day as the first day of the week to gather together for church. I believe in church. Um, So let's keep going here. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, this is literally the first church service. Sunday, Sunday night, this is the first church service. And I know there's lots of arguments about that. This is it. They gathered together on the first day of the week. With the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands. He showed them his sides. And the disciple was o- the disciples, plural, all of them, were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said. Now, again, these disciples are actually physically getting to see Jesus. They see and they believe. We do not physically see him today. What we might see, though, is the truth of who he is, what he's done. We may see the gospel message. We might see and hear it through church, through others. We might see it in scripture or the Bible. We might see it or hear it through a a evangelist like Billy Graham, but we see it and we do the same response. When we see it, we believe it. And when we believe it, we receive the gift of God's life, his salvation, that resurrection, being born again, being justified in that moment of our belief. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you as the Father has sent me. I am sending you. Father sent me, now I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them. <sighs> Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, this is big, big, big. And you may have even... Again, I was raised, this is my own background. You may have a different background. I was raised a little bit, um, I was raised hyper charismatic a little bit. I'm just seeing if this video is still going on Facebook. Okay. Um, I was raised hyper charismatic. And so we'd even have speakers and preachers and during prayer times and they'd breathe in the mic. (sighs) (sighs) Is there anything spiritual in that? No going to tell you right now that's not magic it's not it doesn't make it more powerful what they are trying to do though is replicate what they've seen in scripture i don't fault them for it um i i you know i honor their faith in fact because what they are trying to do is mimic what they've seen in scripture jesus breathed on the disciples and they received the holy spirit there's something in breath we've talked about this yahweh the breath the <gasps> yahweh yahweh this is there's something in that um is it is it needed in church services and stuff maybe maybe not um could it just be done in the flesh yes it could um but i do actually honor and respect people that at least try to take scripture and live it out even if i don't always agree with it um you know if god leads you to blow on someone blow on someone But just blowing into a mic does not suddenly mean that God's more present than he was a minute ago. That's all I'm trying to say. 
Jesus breathed on them, received the Holy Spirit, and with the Holy Spirit, you have now been empowered by the Holy Spirit to actually release forgiveness. Wow. Jesus appears to Thomas. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, what an amazing name. You can still name your kids this today if you wish, um, which mean twin. Thomas um, is is Aramaic. Didymus is more of a Greek word. They both mean the same thing. Um, you know, this is, and Caitlin, I know you're, you just said, if God leads you to blow on someone, blow on it. Um, you're a newer Christian, if I remember correctly from, from Miss Heather's Bible studies. Um, you know what? And this is like the same thing. Jesus, what did he do? Sometimes to heal the blind, he spat in the mud and put it in their eyes. And sometimes he spoke and sometimes he, he prayed and sometimes he laid hands on them. And sometimes he commanded spirits out, you know, it was never the same. And I think there's a reason for why, G why would Jesus heal with mud this time? Why did he spit in an eye? Why did he, you know, there, we could ask these questions. And in my own personal opinion, I believe it was so that we are not locked into one set. This is how you heal the sick. It's not. We follow the Holy Spirit. When we pray, we follow the Holy Spirit. We are led by him. That's why it may be different each time. Go dip in the river. Go, you know, this is, there's different features. And could God call you to blow on someone? Yes. I've done it. I'm one of the guilty hyper charismatics. I'm one of them. I'm, I'm them. They are me. So yes, this could happen. Does it happen all the time? It's the same as angels, right? Do angels happen? Yes. Do they happen all the time? No. And if you've seen an angel in your lifetime more than once or even once, you are probably in the minority of who this has happened to. Let's keep going here. Um, Thomas, Didymus, twin. One of the 12 was not with the disciples when Jesus came. What a shame. What a shame. And I, I'm going to just highlight this for a second because we just said they just had the first church service. They gathered together and who wasn't there? Thomas. He missed church. Side note, don't miss church because Jesus might show up and you don't want to miss him. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and I even put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. So Thomas, this is actually a great testimony of the reality of the resurrection because he's actually saying i'm hurt jesus died there's pain there's grief there's loss i don't believe what you guys are saying i think you guys got together and are actually trying to pull one over on everyone else you're faking something that didn't happen so this is great because the, he's actually the first critic of the resurrection and the good news is he does later believe we see this um, a week later, the disciples were in the house again. A week later, weird. At the same time, huh? In the same house? This is so strange. It's almost as if they've set up a church Sunday nights that they meet every Sunday night in this building at this time to gather together, to worship, to pray, to learn, to grow, and ultimately to have Jesus, the presence of Jesus, show up. Sounds like church to me. Um, a week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked because they're afraid of the Jewish leaders. Why? Because they just killed Jesus for what he believed. And now they're going to go even a step further and go, not only do we believe Jesus, we believe everything he said. We believe he rose again. He's alive. They would kill all of them. Um, so your Bible says eight days. Now that's a good Good notice there, Sharon. Um, this is because of how Jews count days. It's not that there was actually eight days. They would have counted the day they were on as that day. So they would have counted Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's eight days. Crooked fingers. Sorry. That's eight days because they actually, the way Jews would have counted is the day they were on counts as number one, not the next day. Um, that's why that's, that's the difference. And that's why we see it in more modern English. They use it in a more modern English way. Have they changed the Bible? No. 
you need to know the context because it's actually the exact same amount of days. So great, great comment, Sharon. And thank you for pointing that out. A week later, his disciples were in the house again. Thomas was with them. Notice who's not missing church this time. I don't believe it, but I'm still going to show up. I have my doubts, but I'm still going to show up. Sorry, we're going long today. I'd like to get this whole chapter done. So I apologize. Um, Though the doors were locked. Why? Because they're afraid they're going to be killed. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here. See my hands? Reach out your hand. Put your hand into my side. Stop doubting and believe. What happened here? Jesus called his name. Jesus gave up, said, stop. You know, just as we said, Jesus still calls our name today. Sharon, Daniel, are you going to respond to the message of faith? Are you going to believe in me? He said the same thing. He called to Thomas by name, Thomas. Put your hands here. Put reach into my side. Don't stop doubting. You may have doubts. You might have misunderstanding. S- search, learn, find out answers and reach a point of belief. Not based on blind belief either. This is where often the world gets it mixed up. Faith does not mean the, the lack of evidence or facts. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Faith does not mean, but this is where, especially on social media, especially TikTok, sorry to say, they will argue and go, oh, you just have faith. We have truth. We have facts. We have, you can actually have both. Truth, results, searching out, um, um, being educated, response, learning these things doesn't suddenly actually make you have less faith. It actually should increase your faith. I've seen the facts. I have no doubt. I have to believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Who did even the early church recognize Jesus as? They recognized Jesus as God. How is this possible? He prayed, God, God, because we serve one God, the what? One God with three who's, the Trinity. Um, This is early Christian theology. And so when people say the Trinity didn't even appear till later, and yes, the word Trinity did not appear till later, but it is very clear by all scripture writings, by all apostles, all disciples, all early eyewitnesses, by the early church, by the church founders, for the first several centuries, it was common theology, our belief in God, that God is a one being in three persons. This is common belief. Verse 29, then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Amen. You saw and you believed, but blessed, even more blessed are those who have not seen and have yet believed. This is talking about us today. We may not see Jesus appear. Does that still happen today? Yes. I can tell you there's testimonies of Muslim converts in prison that Jesus appears to them and they receive the Lord and turn their lives from Islam and Muslim to Christianity because they go, you are the risen God. Wow. Um, This does happen. Is it rare? Yes, but it does happen. But blessed are those who don't physically see Jesus, but we see the truth. We see the news. We hear it. We receive it. Blessed are us if we've never seen Jesus and we still put our faith in him, who he is. The purpose of John's gospel, is this the last chapter? We have one more chapter, don't we? Yes, one more chapter. Um, The purpose of John's gospel, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, why? That you may believe. John lays it out here. This is our key verse in John. Everything John has said, everything he's done, pointed to is so that we would believe who Jesus is. Question for you today. Do you believe? I can't answer it for you. You have to answer this for yourself. Do you believe? Do you believe who Jesus is? Do you believe what he did? He died and rose again. Do you put your faith 
in the resurrection? Do you believe? Because these things are written. This is written that you may believe. And if you don't believe yet, I'm going to challenge you. Listen to this again. Listen to John. Go through every chapter we've done. Listen to it. Take the time. Put in the, put in the work so that you may hear, you may see, and you may believe and have eternal life with Jesus. But these were written to you that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah. He is who he said he was and the son of God. And that by believing you may have life in his name. You believe who he is. You believe what he did died and rose again. Do you believe? That is it for today. I know we have gone long here. So thank you. If you need to go, God bless you. I'm going to actually play the intro right now and we'll just cut the video here. And then I will answer any questions on Facebook and then we'll stick around for a little bit on TikTok. So here's the intro one more time. Bible read along committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com